Darktable 4.2.0 is out now, and in this video, we're going to look at the new features. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 123, the final installment in the new features for Darktable 4.2.0. Next, the UI of the Range Rating Filter widget has been reworked for better readability. This revised widget is designed to be easier to use and more efficient. For this, I will jump to another collection of images, just go to my road trip. So the Rating Range here, so we can click on that to see unrated images. We can click and drag to select anything between unrated and two stars or we can go, I just want to see three to five star images only, or yeah, whatever you want. Uh, if you mouse over it, you can see click or click and drag to select one or multiple values. Right click opens a menu to select the available values. So there you go. Non-rated only, there we go. So that is the new functionality of the range rating widget. Next, added support for manipulating shapes without using the mouse scroll wheel. This will be helpful for tablet users. The mask manager has been enhanced with a new collapsible section containing controls for changing shapes properties. So let's have a look at that. Here's the mask manager. We will add a circle like so. And down the bottom here, we've got the properties and it says we've not selected a shape, so we'll select the shape. And now you can see that you've got the size and you've got the feather. Beautiful. Uh, what else was there? It's also possible to change a property that is shared by a group of shapes. Okay, well, we'll add a path like so. And for some reason, I'm getting this weird artifact. I don't know what's going on there. I just deselect and reselect it, and then it's fine. And if we then go Shift, so that we've selected both of those paths, right-click and go Group the Forms, we now have a group, and we can now expand the properties. And as you can see, we can change the size of the entire group and the feather of the grouped items. So that's pretty cool. And the third one was the circle and ellipse shapes have also been enhanced with new on-camera controls to change the mask size and feathering. Okay, so let's create a new circle over Tegan's face. And as we can see, we've got these little control dots for both the feather and the size of the circle. For some reason, I can't control them initially. I have to deselect and then reselect the circle and then they work for me. So I don't know if that's a glitch that other people will encounter or if that's just something unique to my system. But if you do encounter it, just be aware that you might need to deselect and then reselect the path and then you'll be able to grab those control points. Cool. Next. Actually, no, there is no next. Uh, the rest of the stuff that comes under the other changes heading in the change notes for Darktable 4.2, I will leave for you to go through. They're sort of not a lot of things that I can really demonstrate. So those things that I have covered, that's kind of the, the major user obvious changes in Darktable 4.2. There's a lot of nice new stuff there. I really like the fact that the modules that are larger, you know, automatically scroll to fit the entire module within the UI. I think that's a really nice addition. Yeah, and there's some other great stuff in there as well. So Darktable just continues to evolve and I love it. Okay, I said I would uh, address why it had been so long between videos. It was a combination of one, I was a little bit unsure of what I really wanted to cover next. And then about a month ago, I can't remember what prompted it, but I made the decision that it was time to move from Linux Mint version 20 to version 21. And while 
Linux is much more predictable and a lot more user-friendly than Windows when it comes to installing updates, I decided for whatever reason that I was actually just going to do a completely clean install. There were some oddities hanging around on my system. I had previously migrated from 19 to 20 without doing a complete reinstall. And I thought, yeah, no, nah, there's, a, there's a couple of things that hung over from that transition that weren't really, you know, the way I wanted them to be. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to blow that entire partition away, recreate the partition, install Linux Mint 21 from scratch, and basically reconfigure everything on my system from scratch. And that part of it was easy. But then when I came to uh, cloning into the Git repository for Darktable, I realized that I had foolishly not backed up the scripts that uh, Coding Dave, as he is known, had helped me to set up, which simplified and expedited the process of, you know, downloading the source code and compiling a new version and and I basically shot myself in the foot by not having those scripts backed up. They are now backed up, I can assure you. So Coding Dave once again came to my rescue, uh, spent a couple of hours with me on Google Meet. We got a whole bunch of things set up. Uh, so hopefully I will be okay going forward. All right. As I'm recording this, it is the 20th of December. Darktable 4.2 will be released tomorrow and a half um, allowing for whatever time zone it is when it's released. But Kath and I are going away for a week uh, between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Uh, Max has now been uh, assigned to an army base here in Australia. And because it's his first Christmas away from home, we said, don't worry, sport, we'll come and spend a week with you and we'll have Christmas together anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm... Um, it's in the Northern Territory, and neither Kath nor I have ever been to the Northern Territory, so we're looking forward to that. So it's going to be good. We uh, hop on a plane on Saturday, today is Tuesday, and go and spend a week in the heat. I cannot wait. Look at me. It's four, five, five days from Christmas in the Southern Hemisphere. We should be in sweltering heat. I'm sitting here in track pants, Ugg boots, and a jumper. It is ridiculous. So I'm looking forward to going to Darwin where it's actually going to be hot. Uh, it'll be, you know, 35 degrees. It's like, yes, bring it on. Cannot wait. So, um, yeah, so looking forward to that. And then when I get back, I will have one more week off. And then more news. As you know, if you've been following this channel, uh, I've been doing two days a week with the ABC at Newcastle over the course of 2022, well, from April of 2022 uh, through until this week. They advertised the ongoing backfill position that I have been in for two days a week to be a six-month, five-day-a-week contract from January 9 to June 30, and I was the successful applicant for that. So that means that from January 9, I will be back in full-time employment for six months at the least. Probably around about April, we will know whether or not the guy that I'm backfilling for is either staying in the role he's been in since April of 2022, uh, and that that will be an ongoing thing forever. And if that happens, then they will just give me the permanent position as operations coordinator, uh, which would be fantastic. Or uh, he will find out that, no, that role is no longer going to be ongoing and he will return to his existing role as operations coordinator, in which case, come June 30, I'll be out of a job again. Uh, so both he and I are hoping that his thing becomes ongoing, which means he can stay in that role forever and he'll be happy and I can stay in this role as operations coordinator forever and I'll be happy. So, yeah, here's hoping. <laughs> 
All right. Um, I think that is all that I had to mention. Oh, if you noticed that my keyboard was a little bit noisier in this episode, it's because Max is gone, right? So he's left home. He's been shipped off to the other end of the country. All of his computer gear is still here because he's waiting to, you know, at the moment he's living on base. Uh, he's waiting till he can move off base and get a place of his own. And when he does, he will get all of his stuff that is here in our house shipped with a transport company up to Darwin. And so that meant that all of his computer gear is sitting here doing nothing. And he has this really nice Razer mechanical keyboard. And I'd never used a mechanical keyboard. And I thought, huh, oh, I'd like to try one out and just see what the difference is and, and how it feels. Uh, and I've been playing with it for about a day and a half now. And I've got to say, I like it. I like it. Uh, it'll be interesting to take it away and put my old, you know, I don't know what you're calling the other type of keyboard, but to put that back in and see whether or not it suddenly feels yucky to work with. Uh, but I do like the keyboard, but they are certainly noisier. Uh, but Max is a mad gamer, so he went and bought himself a mechanical keyboard. So yeah, so that's, if you did notice it, that's, that's why it was so noisy. All right, people, that will do it for this episode. Uh, I will... Wish you a Merry Christmas, even though you might be viewing this after Christmas, uh, and a Happy New Year. Uh, if you don't celebrate those things, then I still wish you the best. Um, I hope that 2023 proves to be a better year than 2022, although, you know, 2022 has certainly not been the mongrel year that 2021 was. So let's hope things just continue to get better. All right, people, take care. And enjoy Dark Table 4.2, and I will catch you in the next one.